everybody to the It Resolves podcast. We are so stoked <gasps> to be back. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Is it Will? Are you Will? I'm Ron the Burgundy. Will? Will, welcome back. Thanks, guys. Uh, what is it? Thanks for tuning in, listening or watching, doing it however you need it. Where do you <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Was it close? We'll get back into this thing uh, at some point. I don't remember. Uh, guys, as always, these episodes are sponsored by our good friends over at Cardsphere.com, the best place to buy, sell, and trade Magic cards. Uh, I seriously, okay, uh, as we have been gone, I've delved back into Cardsphere. It's amazing. Uh, uh, yeah. I've been spending way too much money. Uh, but they um, did also release a draft simulator, uh, draft.cardsphere.com. Oh. So if you're interested in practicing for Ravnica Allegiance, Which wink wink, ya better be. Uh, then now's the time to do it. It's, but it's in the preparation. That's it is what you got to do. Victory's in the prep work. It is. You got to be ready for this pre-release weekend, guys. That's how it works. Uh, Will, yo, tell me how you've been. Uh, sleepy. <laughs> How's the baby? She's excellent. That's so good, dude. <laughs> Top, like. Oh, yes. She's fantastic. I can't think of something funny to say. She's just great. That's good. Uh, yeah. Is she a little poop monster? Oh, she is a poop machine. Yes. All the poop. It's a third of what babies do. <laughs> they eat, they sleep, they poop. <laughs> and let me tell you, if she's, like, got a best yeah. of the three things, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the pooping. It's the poop. That's our best. <laughs> yeah. No, it is. For sure. 100%. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Dude. I am on I'm on diaper duty like ninety percent of the time if I'm yeah. in the house. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, so I can attest. Fair you enough. Know. Fair but enough. But don't let that dissuade you. If y'all want a baby, <laughs> go out have Will's because he's get, tired of it. Get just <laughs> negative. <laughs> I am I am hiding this this <laughs> tiny creature forever. <laughs> It's Tiny fantastic. Creature. Make one of your own. You'll want it to look like you. Make one of your own. If Trust you don't know me. how, Google it. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> spoiler warning. Kids! <laughs> Ask your parents uh, how you came to be. This is a weird place to go. Kevin. We should jump into the episode, maybe. What is this? What is our podcast about, again? Uh, it's about making... Ba- no, magic. Magic. Uh, oh, and we kick it okay. off, if I'm not mistaken, with our random card of the day. Oh, that's right. I'm so stoked that's to get right. back into this. All right, let's do it. Three, two, one. Flameken War Scout. What a name. Uh, this is from oh. Dissension. It is an uncommon. It is a 2-4 for three and a red. When another creature comes into play, you sacrifice it. If you do, it deals four damage to that creature. Uh, so... I'm kind of okay with this. I'm okay. Here... In limited. Let me just say. But I have a huge problem mm. with how this card is worded. Do you see it? When another creature comes into play, so you nope. can't play a creature? No. Nope. Before what? Here's okay, here's my question. When another creature enters the battlefield, sacrifice Flamekin War Scout. Period. If you do. <laughs> if you do. It it doesn't say when another creature enters the battlefield, you, you may. may. Yeah. It says I see what you're saying. if you do that and not when but you, you literally do. have to do that. Yes, you have to, but then it's like, but if you need a lot of <laughs> I don't know. That's just weird. Is that not strange? Yeah, that is a little bit weird, I guess. So, I don't know. But I assume you have to sacrifice it. Whatever the next creature is, you have to sacrifice it because it is not. It does not state may. Right. Yes. So you have to. So they can just like play around it and play like a bigger guy. Well, yeah. Or just not do anything and they make you play another creature. Yeah. I, yeah. Because if you play the creature, it has to deal the four damage to your own creature. Right. I, it, I, so d- like, I don't like this really Yeah, like, I, I was mistaken. This is a bad card, I think. Yeah. Um, it's weird that it's uncommon. I guess, I mean, it does deal four damage, but like... I mean, sure, four is a lot, and that body yeah. is a lot of things, but I don't like... I mean, it's disruptive in that it like makes your opponent kind of think about what they're playing a little bit, but they can sure. play around it. So, so like in an is it deck, this is fine, I think. Yeah, because you're not as focused on creatures. Right, yeah. exactly. And, and you might have secondary burn, like if they play a, like a 5-5. Five, five. Sure. And it deals four damage to it. You might be able to just deal one extra at instant Exactly. Speed. This, I think, Flamekin War Scout is okay in, in Is It, but like, in Is It Limited? And Is It Limited is kind of its weakest yeah. form, yeah. variety, flavor, That's whatever. Fair. So I don't think it's great. That's um, fair. The English is also all kinds of weird. I mean, so, uh, way to be there, Wizards. Thanks, Wizards, <laughs> for giving me that. Killing it, guys. To note it. And that was the first thing I saw about it. It's like, I yeah. don't. Well, yeah. I don't like that. I don't know. It's interesting. 
It's anyway. a weird card. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sold on it. Seven cents though, if you want to pick it up. Seven cents. There you go. Yeah. You yeah. Can pick up like a lot of them. Um. Anyway. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. Depends how many cents you have. Exactly. We have none. Okay. So. All right. I'm the dad. <laughs> Don't tread on my dad jokes, sir. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, all right, guys, we're going to jump into Ravnica Allegiance. Mm. Um, yes. We're a little bit late to the party just because we will have Sorry. <laughs> it's all Will's fault is the takeaway. It's true. Um, but mm. we're stoked to be talking about it now. There is a mm. lot to talk about. I am stoked for this set. Uh, yep. It looks really good. Um, yeah. Will, let's let's lead off with this. Which is your favorite guild just looking at the cards? Um. Okay, so it kind of depends. Okay. Like, flavor-wise, uh, Rakdos really stepped up for me. Dude, Rakdos, they the look, spectacle mechanic is sweet. They look dope. Yeah, and they look dope. Flavor-wise. But in terms of playability, um, competitive edge, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, I'm all in. Uh, well, okay. Logically, I think Orzhov is just kind of the best well-rounded guild. Yeah, it's, uh, like, consistently good. I think the afterlife mechanic is, like, just extra value. Yeah, I think, it, I, think it's, <laughs> I think it's good. I mean, it's lingering souls on a bunch of creatures, basically. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, um, which is sweet. Um, so I think, logically, Orzhov is in a strong position. Sure. But I think Simic has gotten a lot of fun, flashy toys yeah. to play with. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I dig it. Uh, Gruul, I mean, red and green stuff, they're going to be strong. They're going to win games just because they beat you up. Yep. So, like, they're fine. Um, but yeah, Orzhov, then Simic for me. Uh, you know? how do you feel about Azorius? So, <laughs> Azorius! <laughs> I feel pretty underwhelmed with Azorius. I'm not sold on a lot of, what did I do? Nothing, Nothing. it's fine. You're good. I'm not sold on a lot of the stuff that they're doing. Mm. Um, gonna be honest. Like, I mean, it feels to me like they're so almost cohesive and <laughs> almost cohesive. Yeah, they're so like almost what I would want. So like, okay, here's my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I talked about this. I did a mechanics video okay. on all the new mechanics that we're seeing here. Go watch that video. It was released last week on Wednesday. But um, addendum yeah. as a like keyword, not super sold on it. Um, hmm. here's what I do like about it. I will say in a constructed environment. Depending on the deck you're against, you can you can tailor when you're playing everything to the decks that you're against and theoretically give yourself a boost. So for instance, and the card I used in the example on the video was Sphinx's Insight, uh, which for mana I think you draw two cards. If you play it main yep. phase, you also gain two life. Right. Against like an aggro Rakdos Gruul deck, you just play it main phase because you're gonna gain two life and you really don't have to worry about like countering an individual high value spell because a Gruul or a Rakdos deck most likely is going to be more interested in like flooding the board with a bunch of little dudes and it feels really bad to counter a little dude. And so like sure. you play that main phase, you gain a couple life, it buffers you a little bit. And then against like a theoretically another Orzhov deck or not Orzhov, excuse me, Azorius deck, uh, you leave it up and play it end of turn because they're going to have more high value spells that you're going to want to counter. And so, like, sure. you leave up the counter, then if need be, you just throw this out at instant speed to draw two cards and be efficient. So I like that it gives you some flexibility, but it also kind of takes away flexibility because, mm -hmm. like, you're really having to tailor it to the matchup that you're against, and, like, it feels a little weird to me. I also don't like it in terms of flavor. Okay, uh, yep, I'm with you. I really don't like it in terms of flavor because in some aspects it's like, okay, right place, right time aspect of Azorius. They're, like, the lawbringers, whatever. But, like, look at, like, Detain, right? Detain yeah. was the last one, uh, the last mechanic that came out of Azorius, that makes sense. They're the law bringers. They're the ones that, like, if somebody does something wrong, they detain them. It makes sense. Addendum, right. like, they're writing a law, and so there's an addendum to the law, and, like, all this weird stuff. No, like, that's stupid. I'm, I don't like that. I think it doesn't make I at like, all, like, any sense. I think the word works. Addendum is fine. The word works. It's legal the way stuff. it works does not. I don't like that you do. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I don't I don't like Azorius's, uh keyword i don't like their mechanic in this set no. really at all it's my um, least favorite for flavor uh and potentially playability to you it's my least favorite for play playability absolutely um because remember you don't ever get anything for free in magic you pay yeah. for anything via yeah, yeah. mana so i mean even looking at sphinx's insight it's a four mana spell and it's you two life and two cards which yeah instances where you want that yeah but it's four mana yeah 
There are a bunch of more effective things to do for four mana. I get that you draw two cards, but we have way more efficient yeah. uh, card advantage for much less mana. That's fair. Right, way more efficient. Um, I um, don't think two life is worth all of that. I kind of feel that. Duff. I will say, though, the rest like of the mechanics... It doesn't incentivize me to play that oh, oh, the main phase, is what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. No, I get that. Um, but I will say, in terms of flavor, the rest of the mechanics are really sweet. Yeah. Like, Afterlife, oh, yeah. perfect for Azorius. Dig I, it. I love... Or, not Azorius. I keep mixing these up. Or Uh That's Spectacle, hard. perfect. What I really like about Spectacle, too, is that it takes a very aggro-focused uh, deck style, play yep. style, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. potentially gives it mid-game playability. Because uh, in the instance of like the Rixmati Reveler or whatever, mm -hmm. um, it lets you, yeah, wow, that was really convenient. Uh, it enters the battlefield, you discard a card, you draw a card, yeah, you can rummage just by paying its normal cost. Or you can actually draw a brand new hand with like three new cards uh, if you can spectacle it out. And so like you get a little bit more longevity. It also boosts the efficiency of your spells if sure. you're going to be dealing damage. So you can get to the like, hey, I can play two spells per turn threshold way quicker now sure uh if you're dealing damage which obviously this deck is going to look to do so oh, yeah. i like that kind of the same thing with riot um mm -hmm. because you can again either give it haste if you're just trying to win the game quick or if you're in like a board stall position or you need like a stronger beefier creature you just buff it and yeah. then you're kind of good to go um adapt is like my least favorite in terms of playability and limited uh sure because sure. I don't really like that you have to invest so much into one card that could easily just be killed. Uh, mm -hmm. That seems kind of bad. And it's really, I mean, yeah, you can technically do it more times if, like, you remove the counters, move them somewhere else. Sure. But, like, it's kind of a one-shot deal most of the time. Uh, and I'm not a huge fan of that. But okay. uh, as far as flavor goes, it's great. And I do think in uh, Constructed, when you might be able to effectively move these counters around and do some really cool stuff, mm -hmm. Adapt is going to be sweet. Uh, I think it takes the most setup. Uh, to really make it like thrive in terms of like moving these counters around, making it like a synergized strategy. To like min max it, you're yeah, to max sure. it, yeah. Um, I think in general it's just a strong mechanic though, because it's sure. just boosting everything. So like that's sweet. Yeah. Um, and I like you said, there's so many toys to play with in Simic. Like yeah, it gets, uh, it gets new birthing pod. Fun. <laughs> uh yeah. So do you want to jump into speaking of that? Some yeah. of the highlight cards for, for let's do it. Let's talk about, about new birthing pod. Uh, <laughs> Prime speaker Vanifair, uh, Vanifar, Vanifair, Vanny. Uh, two four for two, a green and a blue, and you can tap it and sacrifice another creature, and then you literally get the birthing pod effect. You get a creature yep. from your deck uh, fr with converted mana cost equal to one plus the sacrifice creature's uh, mana cost, sure. and then you just put it into play. I love this card, but. I think there's a lot of hype around it because it's yeah. the new birthing pod, and right. I don't think it's going to be nearly as good as everybody thinks. Right. So, yeah. I mean, that's exactly it. You were talking about, and you may have mentioned it, um, but you talked about um, all of its downsides, and yeah. there are certainly downsides to it. Uh, it's a creature. It can be burned. It can be removed. Yep. Um, it's a creature, so summoning sickness is a thing. You can't use it as soon as you get it. Right. Right. So this is a neutered birthing pod. Very neutered. Definitely. <laughs> now, that is, one, a good thing, because we saw how broken birthing yeah, pod got. Yeah, yeah. Um, however, this isn't like the environment, I believe, to really break birthing pod no. in the same way, in standard. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, uh, this could affect like the modern scene if it was as good. Yeah. You know what I mean? If it oh, was yeah. as good as birthing pod. Um, I don't think this touch is modern at all. No. Uh, even though, again, that's the burning pod. Yeah. Uh, it's just way too vulnerable. Yeah. Um, okay. No, I agree. That being said, for standard, I think this is just. I go between like this is a trap, even though it's really cool. Yeah. I do too. Actually. And like, this is gonna be in some mid-range decks kind of thing. Yeah. Because like, I'm not certain. Oh, as to what like the peak value is. Like, what is the best thing you could do with this? Is it Sacking some four mana creature to get uh, a dream eater out or something yeah, like that. Like yeah. I'm not sh I'm not sure what the best route is, and um, I don't think there's one that's better than just outright casting a threat. I want to see something too. Okay, you know I mean something I was interested in. It mm -hmm. does say sacrifice another creature, not itself. I was interested right. if you could sacrifice it uh, because doing that straight into 
a Doom Whisper or something like that would be kind of sweet. Oh, well, that'd be something different. Um, that'd that be, would yeah. be completely different, yeah, but yeah. Uh, it does have to be another creature, which right. kind of sucks. Right. Um, that would have been really sweet, though. Yeah, that would have been really good. <laughs> kind of cool. Um, um, I don't, but... I'm not sold on this. Yeah. I do think it's a bit of a trap. That being said, uh, I do think there are going to be a lot of decks around this because it does have so much hype mm-hmm. around it. So mm-hmm. hopefully mm-hmm. one sticks and we can actually get a cool deck out of it. But Yeah, I just don't see him being competitively, I don't competitively so. viable. I don't uh, think so either. You know, um, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, another Simic card that I just want to talk about really quickly. Uh, scroll back all the way to the top. Hydroid Crisis. Where are we at? All the way up. This card uh, is yeah. kind of sweet. So it's X, a green, and a blue insane. for a 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, it has flying and trample, and it comes into the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. No surprise. Uh, when it comes, when you cast it, so not even when it enters the battlefield, when you cast it, uh, you gain half X life and draw half X cards. You round down each time. Yeah, that's kind of a downside, but whatever. Uh, Fine. This is awesome. <laughs> uh, amazing. Uh, any amazing. mid-range deck... Uh, Sultai Midrange, looking at you, homie. Uh, uh, this yeah. is the card that it wants. Like, Amazing. <laughs> this, so good. This is an, just insane. Yeah. Like, you're telling me I get to pump some cards back into my hand, yep. get some life, haha, take that red dex, yeah. and I put a threat on the board. I mean... That flies. And has strength. That flies. I mean, that's just insane. So I love we, this. we destroy board parity because we have trample. So yeah. it doesn't matter if, like, we block and, and whatever. You, you chump me, it, you know. You know how yeah, trample yeah. works. I don't explain trample. <laughs> this is just that's so good. next episode. Um, <laughs> right. No. This breaks everything that, like, would ruin green decks. Like It does. Board stalls, chump blockers, da 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 And it just draws you into more stuff. Amazing. So, like... I'll I, take I four, love it. please. Um, yeah, Thank that's one of those much. cards that... Oh, yeah, and it is not legendary, so you no. can actually have four. Yes. Um, yes. This is just, like, pure value. That's all that this card is. And Absolutely. I love it. Uh, it's super, super good. Just insane. Just insane. Um, a cutesy card. We got Simic Ascendancy. Ascendancy. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. It's another you-win-the-game yeah. effect. Uh, I'd like to see that if that could happen. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm sure that you know there's a deck out there that'll make it work. Yeah, probably. Um, uh, a card hey. I want to briefly mention. Uh, jumping out of Sigma Simic. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, Gruel Spellbreaker. Uh, this yep. card is gonna be good. Uh, this is another just kind of pure value card in my mind. It's a three three for one, a red and a green. With riot, mm-hmm. so it either gets haste or you get a plus one plus one ca- plus one counter. Wow! I cannot speak today. Counter, counter, uh, and that's as it enters the battlefield. You cannot respond to that trigger. Nobody can. So that just happens. Uh, you can respond to the card, not the trigger. Uh, it does have trample, and then as long as it's your turn, you and Gruel Spellbreaker have hexproof. And this is another non-legendary creature at three, so you can just. Chug four of them into your deck, and like uh, you're good yeah. to go. You know what I mean? Yeah, this <laughs> is really nice. <laughs> it's just a pure value card. I think there's a lot of just like value stuff. Yeah. Deputy of Detention, another one. D Sphere on a stick. Yeah. Pretty stoked about that. Uh, Bedevil is like a little bit worse of a uh, Dreadbore in my mind. Oh, definitely. 100%. Uh, it does hit artifacts, which Dreadbore did not, but it's harder to cast. Uh, yeah. It is instant speed, which I think is better. Uh, but sure. it is much harder to cast with that well, double black. Yes, but I do think instant speed makes it nicer. Oh, um, God, yeah. Gonna be uh, honest, but you're, I think, you're right. Yeah, there's gonna be some interesting decks coming out of this. I think three color is obviously gonna be the way to go. Um, oh, for sure. Like, I think Sultai just got a huge buff. I do mm-hmm. think Esper might have some legs, but we'll see. That's a little bit speculative. Um, yeah, I'm not sold on Esper just because I don't think we got enough, um, like... Well, What's the word? Efficiency mm. out of the set that I would have liked. That's fair. Um, we do have some good, like, three mana removal, like uh, Mortify, Mortify's yeah. back. Um, that's just solid. Sweet new removal. art, by the way. Yeah, on it's Mortify. very nice. Um, and, I mean, there, there are some spells that, that work that are yeah. fine. I just yeah, don't yeah. think it's as strong as it was, um, like, the, the, in the decks that haunt my nightmares. Um, <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay. I think that there are control decks that'll be good. Yeah. Um, yeah I yeah. will say, I think a big theme that kind of underpins this entire set yeah. is we are going to neuter red deck wins yes, by a lot. Yes, uh, 100%. There are <laughs> cards all over the place that just make it so red deck is not as strong. Yeah. Right? 
Uh, Gruel Spellbreaker is a great example. Mm -hmm. You can only burn me on your turn, so now you have to choose. Do I put out creatures or do I cast my burn spells? Yeah. My burn is dead weight on your turn, so I can't play around your creatures at all. Yep. Like, that's that's huge. It is that's huge. gigantic. Yeah, it's absolutely massive. Um, Absorb is <laughs> kind of, Okay, this is a... This is... I want to I wanna talk about Absorb. Let's do it. This is a spell <laughs> that... It is, you're right. <laughs> by all accounts, sucks. I mean, yeah, kind of. It is a three mana counter. Yeah. With three colored mana symbols. Yeah. Double blue and a white. Yeah. That's awful. Oh, but you gain three life. <laughs> oh, <laughs> worth ugh. it. <laughs> but however, however, <laughs> how relevant is three life in this meta? I think hugely relevant. So relevant. So, Absorb. Yeah. Welcome back, buddy. Yeah, Absorb, I'm stoked to have back. It's uh, it's so interesting that this card <laughs> has just, it, it's a rare now. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I could, this is, this baffles me. Yeah. How I was like, Absorb, I don't want that. And then I kept thinking about all the decks that are popular that are good. And I was like, well, wait a minute, Absorb, yep. I do want that. Yeah. That's um, very good. It is very good. I think also cards like Kaya's Wrath is going to be great. Uh, because oh, not only does it destroy all creatures, Kaya's but Wrath. you gain life equal to the creatures you control. A sweeper that with upside. Yeah, uh, at four mana. Go. Like, yeah, it's difficult to cast. Two white, two black. That's difficult to cast. Sure. But, like, we've got fixing. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. That's not going to be the biggest yeah. issue. Mana's never really been... When we have shock lands in particular, it's going to be really difficult right. to be struggling on mana. Yeah. Um, and I will say, on the other side of the coin, control decks are getting kind of screwed, too. In some cases, cards sure. like Cinder Vines, uh, whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, it deals one damage to that player. You yep. can then sacrifice it after you pay one to destroy target artifact or enchantment. Deals two damage to that permanent controller. What a good card. That is a great card. Commander players eat your heart out on that uh, one. For real. Um... Rhythm of the Wild is interesting. So mm -hmm, creature mm -hmm. spells you control can't be countered. Yep. And non-token creatures you control have riot. You can give a creature double riot. Uh, that can happen with this card. Really? Yeah. Uh, Are you sure? 100% positive. I looked this up when I did the mechanics video. That can happen. Uh, interestingly, you can How? legally give a creature haste twice <laughs> if you really want to. Um, you shouldn't, <laughs> but you can. Right. Um, and so, like, are you po I'm absolutely positive. Help me out. Help me. I'm me through absolutely that. How does positive. that work? So the creature, if a na if a creature naturally has riot, yes, it when you cast it before it actually, or excuse me, as it enters the battlefield, uh, okay. you choose the first riot trigger. If Rhythm of the Wild is out, mm -hmm. it gets another riot. This adds riot to another I riot. I see. And so you actually get two riot triggers. I see. And so you can actually buff it twice. You can give it haste and a buff. You can do like. Whatever you want to do, uh, that's really, really sweet. Wow. Um, so Rhythm of the Wild is going to be kind of backbreaking for a lot of, like, control counter decks in particular. Uh, just mm. because you can't counter anything, like, uh, any creature Yeah, spells. what are you going to do? Um, it might be more of a sideboard card, obviously, because it doesn't do that much against, like, other aggro decks. Yeah, it does give creatures riot and everything, but, like, yeah. uh, the, the can't be countered is really the, the draw there. Sure, that is the biggest thing. Um, oh, yeah. There's a lot to be said about getting bigger, stronger creatures faster. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like turning even this uncommon Zerta, whatever? Zerta, Zerta Goblin. Goblin. Yeah, sure. We'll sure. With that. Turning that into a 3 3 with haste for two, that's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but but you're right. It's That's a anti control card. Absolutely. Uh, Growth Spiral is a card I wanted to talk about really quick. I love this I card. I love this card for a lot of reasons. Yeah. One, uh, so really quick, it's an instant for a green and a blue. Yep. You draw a card and you put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. How good does End Step feel with Growth Spiral? Oh, it feels so good. Um, this Amazing. just adds so much to any ramp deck. Like, this just makes it so much easier to ramp. Oh, uh, nice. And I love the art. <laughs> the art is very, beautiful. Very pretty. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. Very pretty. Um, I do think that's a cool card. I'm interested to see if that actually, you know, gets played in something. Oh, it absolutely should. It should, um, yeah. And I think, uh, well, shoot me if I'm wrong, but yeah. the mid range deck might be the one to play this in. It might be. I don't know. I mean, it does draw you a card, so it's sticking through your deck, deck and it puts a land puts on your battlefield. Land? If oh. you're in three color, that can theoretically help fix you a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, it puts you a turn ahead. <laughs> on end step for yeah. free yeah, yeah i mean oh, it's, it's, it's really really sweet did you want to talk about this guy because yeah, you love this absolutely <laughs> yep spawn of mayhem when you need a beater look to the skies 
That's been kind of a cardinal rule of mine. Uh, this is a 4-4 four, four for 4, 2 colorless, 2 black. Spectacle 3, however, as it is a Rakdos card. Mm. Uh, 1 colorless, 2 black. You can pay 3 mana if an opponent lost life this turn. There's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of cards that are going to ping, that can ping. Yeah. Um, heck, I think the Rakdos Guildmage pings for 1. <laughs> it's sweet. Uh, this is a dude that's just monstrous. Oh, absolutely. Uh, n- and that's only on his, like, physical stats alone. Let's talk about his effect. At the beginning of your upkeep, Spawn of Mayhem deals one damage to each player. Then, if you have ten or less life, put a plus one, plus one counter on Spawn of Mayhem. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> love it. That's, so, so good. This And this just feels like, it's such a gamble, which I yeah, love for yeah. Rakdos. They're going all out with it. Oh, yeah. Flop a big scary meaty boy on the field. <laughs> Tell him to go eat some, you know, dudes up and he'll... Yep. It's, it's great. Also it's non-legendary. Great. Yeah. A uh, lot of really good non-legendary cards. You I'd, could honestly build just a mono black aggro deck with well, the cards we have. So I'm wondering, do you think there's a Jun deck in here? Um. So, okay. I think that... Or do you think Soul Tide would be better? Oh, I think the classic idea of Jund uh, doesn't work. Okay. That it, like, gets, um, it devalues, devalues your opponent. Yes. You know, the modern Jund that we're so used to, I don't think any kind of Jund like that exists. Okay. I think you could make a really aggressive Jund deck. That's kind of how I'm feeling yeah, about it. I um, think you have okay. enough tools and pieces to make a really scary, like, beat your face up junk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rhythm of the Wild mm-hmm. into stuff like I forgot his name already. <laughs> Mayhem <laughs> Splinter Face Devourer of Souls. Spawn of Mayhem, I mean. Oh, First, try. Uh, First try. <laughs> yeah, I think that there's plenty of things like Growth Chamber Guardian, for example. One of the things that a Jun deck would be a weakness it would have in this in this meta is that it doesn't have enough like early game plays that are relevant. Yeah. Uh, Growth Chamber Guardian, I think, is a great play. Yep. Um, you get to pump the board now with two twos. That'll get bigger. Yep. And that's cool. For two. <laughs> Sweet. Um, all on that. Um, it's also an elf crab warrior, and that's just awesome. Um, I identify as an elf crab warrior, so. <laughs> I thought you might. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I support your decision. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, however. However, I do think that the the Soul Tide deck is probably um huh, hold on. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know why I think this is so funny. I think the Soul Tide deck uh man it's good to be back. Anyway, uh, is probably more would be more consistent. Yeah. I don't know necessarily that you need to be three colors to be like as aggressive as you can be, I think it's... I think with the Soul Tide build, you get a lot more of the, like, late game potency and hand right. destruction. Because, um, like, things like Thought Erasure are still in. Right. Uh, we do have Drill Bit, which is, like, kind of a worse Thought Erasure. Um, but it mean? does have a spectacle cost of one, and it literally is just Thought Seize for no life. Oh, that's right. I um, remember. Yeah, and so I, like, like, I like it a lot. It is a three mana spell normally, so it does kind of suck in that realm. But if you're dealing damage to your opponent, if you do have a bit of aggression in your deck, yeah. that's a one mana Thought Seize with no downside. Well, I mean, um, the thing that this does is it's going to make cards like Footlight Fiend yeah. uh, like <coughs> constructed viable. It's going to make the Guild Mage constructed viable. Yeah, I yeah, I want to yeah. be sure that I'm not As long as they consistently that. deal damage. Right, that's the thing. Things. Yeah, no, you're you know? right. You're definitely right. Um, Which is kind of like a win-win because oh, yeah. now they're one less life and now I'm, I'm doing a thing to them. Yep. Um, I just don't know that you have to be Jund to make a really good aggressive deck. Yeah. I think it's probably they're somewhere in there. Yeah. Uh, there's a really good Jund deck and you know, heck, I'll make it. <laughs> Fine. You've convinced me. <laughs> um, I do want to quickly mention a card that... I, mm. This is the only card I'm going to mention for this. Oh, God. Oh, God. No, stop. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Just got a call in the middle of this. Um, I'm really interested in uh, some cards outside of standard. Uh, the one okay. that I'm going to mention mm-hmm. is Judith, the Scourge Diva. I really okay. am interested in this card. So uh, the reason being, one, it is a human. A uh, human? A human. Got it. Uh, so modern humans potentially would love a card like this. Uh 
Other creatures you control get plus one plus zero. It's a three mana human. Uh, it's a two two. And whenever a non creature uh, you control dies, it deals one damage to any target. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't really run multiples of these, so I don't know if Modern Humans is really the way that you want to go with this, but okay. uh, think of all of the, like, um, Vizia Seer decks. Yeah. Where you sacrifice and scry one and, like, do all that stuff. Yeah. The, like, uh, the, what's the Vizier of uh, Remedies? Remedies. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That deck? This is like a, a kill con in that deck. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. So I will say with that, uh, actually, I think it's better than um, what they've got right now, which is the little goblin dude for four. Uh, right? Murderous Redcap? Yeah, I think he's four. Isn't yeah, he? that's one way to do it. There's also just... Uh, well, what I'm saying is I mean, you don't need Redcap. This comes in a, a turn. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. once you get Redcap out, you just sack it to Viscera Seer. Yeah. But if you've got Viscera Seer, Judith, and any other creature, yeah. you're golden. Yep. Well, I mean, obviously you need uh, It's like Vizier, Kitchen Finks or something. Yeah, would Kitchen Finks would work. Um, um, even though Kitchen Finks is a win con on its own, you just get infinite life. Yeah, I mean, you so, do. But, there's that. But... Um, I don't know. This is just like a really interesting card for me, I think. Yeah. It also just powers up everything. I mean, it's a oh, yeah. lord for anything, so that's yeah. kind of cool. That's nice. Um, uh, I dig it. I think that that... There are a lot of cards that I think are, might actually touch modern a little bit, uh, but that's just one that I wanted to mention really quick. Sure. Because I like that one. Sure, sure. <laughs> well, I mean, I think... Oh, uh, uh, where, sh where is she at? The Spellbreaker, I think, is oh, a yeah, potential yeah. for modern. Maybe. Like, you throw it in Jund? What do you think? Maybe. Uh, I love that it gives you hexproof. Right. Uh, now it is it's just tasty. on your turn, but like that's kind of all you need it to be. Um, <laughs> and it is just a really aggressive card for three mm -hmm. mana. I'm not sure. Um, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. three is a really critical time for Jund because uh, sure. it does have Liliana's and things like that to play on three. Sure. So it that's may true. just be that it doesn't have a slot. Um, not necessarily that it's a bad card, just that like there are there's, too many other high options. value cards yeah, yeah, already yeah, yeah. in it. I feel you. But that might be incorrect. I mean, I, I don't know. No, I, I mean, I think you're right. There's no way that Lily yeah. doesn't win out over that. I mean, Lily's amazing. Um, all right. Well, let's, real quick, let's yeah. talk about the walkers, because we did get three new walkers. Yeah. Um, Kaya? Mm. Yeah. What did you think? Um, okay. So, I talked about this in Magic Wars, which hopefully, if all went well, is up. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, but... She is underwhelming. Yeah. Um, okay, so here's the deal. Normally, Planeswalkers and, like, Limited, I'm going to talk Limited first, Okay. are like, yes, always, right? Like, if you're in those colors, you go for the Walker because the Walker is a very unique kind of card that most decks are not going to be able to play against when they're a sure. limited card pool. Okay, um, yeah. So they're, generally speaking, a very good win condition in a Limited deck. Kai just doesn't really do that much. Yeah. <laughs> um... So yep. I don't really like her. I talked about this, uh, again, in Magic Wars. If I open her, I don't even know if I play her. Uh, and so, okay. like, I I don't know. That's an interesting card. Yep. But okay. uh, Constructed, maybe there might be some weird things you can do with her. But, like, mm. she's very underwhelming. Okay. Uh, Dovin, the first ability is the literal do-nothing ability. I hate it. It's so stupid. I it hate literally it. doesn't do anything. <laughs> like, it is so... <laughs> Not Azorius. No. I hate it. They kind of messed up Azorius a little bit. A little um, bit. The second ability is fine. I, I mean, like it more. It's, I like it's that. It's good. Yeah. Uh, I actually don't know the ultimate. Look at the top 10 cards of your library. Put three of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library. I mean, that's it's fine. fine. It's fine. That's like, uh, what is the seven mana like? Look at the top seven. You know what I'm talking about? It's dig through time. It's like dig through time oh. on... Uh, Planeswalker, which is cool, but I'd rather just cast Dig Through Time. Um, <laughs> True, but Domri. Uh, actually, this is the one I know the least. It's four mana, which is expensive for Domri, but it's a five loyalty. Yeah. Um, At four mana, yeah. that's not bad. Uh, add no. mana. Uh, spend only on a creature spell. Is that what it says? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's kind of well, classic. No, no, sorry, excuse me. If it is spent on a creature spell, it gains Riot. Oh, it gains Riot. Oh, I do like that, actually. That's kind of fine. You could give something three Riots. You could. That is possible. Uh, oh, snap! <laughs> uh, minus one. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal up to two, two creature creatures. cards yes. from among them uh, and put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I like that. Yeah. Uh, that's that's kind of classic, Domery. And then minus eight, which is only three loyalty away. 
worth noting. You get an emblem with, at the beginning of each end step, create a 4-4 red and green beast creature token with Trample. I'm kind of in for Domri. Yeah? More so than the other two. I think he works better in his colors. I think he's going to be easier to he use. He represents his colors pretty well. Yeah. Um, I mean, Kaya represents their colors fine. It's just, yeah, it's just like they're so restricted. It just sucks. Yeah. Exile a non-land permanent with a CMC one or less. Ooh. Like, okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Honestly, that's better in modern than it is in standard yeah, right yeah. now, and it's not even good in modern. No. Uh, what's the exile up to two target creature cards from a single graveyard? You gain two life. Yeah, that's just like anti graveyard hate. Right. Um, which is like relevant in some games, but like, I mean, we do we see many graveyard decks in standard right now? Uh, no, not really. I mean, well, there's okay, there's uh the Golgari deck that has some graveyard play. Oh yeah, um, the mid range like aggro -y deck. Right, right, but um, not right. but I think that's gonna like get a change with this now uh, anyway it is worth noting her her ultimate is kind of scary right uh yeah it deals um, damage to target player equal to the number of cards that player owns in exile and you gain that much life definitely scary um right i mean it's, and it is only for minus five so you can get there in like three turns you can do it on the third turn after yeah. she's cast um yeah. which is i mean worth noting but like i don't know yeah i, don't I think she's kind of a sideboard card yeah, I mean, she kind of works as an alternate win in that that mm -hmm. ultimate, I mean, it kind of looms. Yeah, enough, like, you have you know? to deal with it. Um, right. And against a graveyard deck, she is okay because her plus one does so much. So, right. like, I do think in that instance, she's very good, but, like, 90% mm -hmm. of the time, she's not. So, like, yeah. I think, again, sideboard is probably where she kind of lives. I agree. I think she's good enough to be, uh, like, the card to have against this whatever this deck is yeah yeah um and even then i don't know that she's gonna like be the answer to your problems i no. think it's gonna be like i guess i'll play kaya and they're like oh, i guess i'll deal with kaya and, yeah you know, it's just like an annoyance maybe then you do it uh, then they kill it with that rakdos card you do a handshake and next <laughs> turn done but like devil yeah <laughs> she gets bedeviled and then you know yeah. on to the next one there's um, weird card name um yeah i don't yeah so I'm i don't like uh kaya, though I don't love any of these walkers. I think Domri is no. probably decent enough. Yeah, I think Domri is going to be okay. I think um, Triple Riot sounds fun. Yeah, Triple Riot that seems good. I do think fun. in an aggressive, like like we said, kind of Jundi deck, uh, mm -hmm. Domri seems mm -hmm. like perfect Yeah, uh, for that style deck. Sure. Um, but I do think, you know, four mana Planeswalker, meh. There was a... What was it? I don't know, dude. Oh, so... <laughs> This was a weird card, Frilled Mystic. Um, no, oh, you know what? like four mana flagship cards. Yeah, you know what? What I was gonna say doesn't even matter. It's stupid. Uh, it's like a Mystic Snake. What were you gonna say? Don't worry about it. But it is. It's like a Mystic Snake. Tell me after the episode. Um, I will. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, will. It's Mystic Snake, just harder to cast. Right. Um, man, that's fine. Mystic Snake's good. Yeah, I do like Mystic Snake. Uh, that's all right. I do. That not. might hit a Soul Tide deck because it's disruption and it's on a stick. No, yeah, I, I like it. That. I like it for the mid range deck. I don't know how many you run, but yeah, I'm not it's sure good because it is difficult to cast. Mm -hmm. I will but say. it is a good body. Yeah, it's pretty. Fun. I mean, we be, we gonna be getting all our lands, baby. We got that one card, growth <laughs> growth spiral. That's true, and we've got breeding pool. We've got you know all the things. We gonna have enough stuff, baby. <laughs> all right. So with that, yes. Um, how do you feel? Did we cover it all? I think we cover most of it. Cool. Um, obviously, if there are any other things that you want to mention to us that we might have missed, uh, let us know in the comment section. But I am stoked to see how this set plays out. I think it'll be pretty good. Um, Likewise. So I'm interested. I'm really stoked to see how Standard gets uh, switched up because I do think this shakes things up pretty heavily. Yeah, it's going to be nuts. Uh, so we'll see. Um, but that's kind of it. That's all I've got to say. Uh, uh, same. Do what? Same. All right. I'm good. Well, let's finish up the episode with our crack of pack sponsored by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. Uh, we are still, we do still, this is the last week, I guess. So we have Guilds of Ravnica. Um, so my gold card is Narc Amoeba. Will, you have Knight of Autumn. Knight of Autumn. Still just a great card. Giant still just card. a great card. Uh, I'll go ahead and say I did not get it, but I got a very good card. I got Nim Mizzet. Oh, hi, buddy. is probably the pick because Nim Mizzet's kind of a bomb. Uh, yeah. No, Nib <laughs> is great. Nib is great. Yeah, that would definitely be my pick. So, 
Uh, I didn't get it either, but I also got a great card. Uh, Temple Garden. Hey, not what bad you, packs, actually. What are you going to say about Temple Garden? It's just, uh, that it's a Shockland. Uh, and you would be right. <laughs> you would be right. Oh, I know what card. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that so, card's insane. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which one? The blue one. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> so uh, the pick is Murmuring Mystic, obviously. Um, that card is probably the best uncommon for draft in this I set. think it's so easy to make a great deck with Murmuring yeah, Mystic. It's very, very good. Uh, it just, yeah. You just get a few of those and you're like, oh, well, any instant I have is, you know, going to help Hello, you. Hello, Value. Yep. <laughs> How are you today? Mr. Value, thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you again to Grand Slam for uh, sponsoring that segment. We're really stoked to be opening up uh, Ravnica Allegiance. We should be back on that uh, next week, so I'm stoked about it. Uh, Will, welcome back. We're Dude, happy to thanks. be back. It's so good to be back and actually recording a podcast. Doesn't episode. that feel good? It does feel good. I was really like hyped about this earlier, and then it happened, and it got worse, but that's okay. It always does. Um... <laughs> It, you know what? <laughs> we would be so much more successful if we did not laugh at our own jokes. Yeah, but it's I can't so help hard. It. Like, <laughs> um, I always laugh. You comment on every like card guess that we do, and you just say stupid stuff. And I've never been wrong. No, yeah, you're never. I've wrong. been right 100. percent Um, what was the latest one? The Laughing Boys? Was that you or was that somebody else? That was somebody. It was else. about the wolves. Yeah, the green wolf. Yeah. Wolves. Um, was that? Yes, a bunch of Howly Scary Boys or Howly Scary Boys, that's, that's what said. it was. Yeah, what yeah. did I say? I don't, I don't know. know. Some things. Cute. Um, but yeah. that's what they are. They're like wolves or whatever. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, stoked to be back, guys. Uh, looking forward to getting back into the swing of things. I don't know what my favorite one is. It was it was Fork. Oh, when yeah. You posted Fork? Yeah, yeah. That guy got it right. It was Fork. Yeah. But I replied to him, and I said it was Spoon. <laughs> <laughs> and I said... <laughs> Copy target instant or sorcery uh, spell. You may place it in a large soup bowl. <laughs> Feeds one to two people. <laughs> uh, I did have one person, and he's done this twice now uh, on Instagram. Yeah. He comments, and he's like, these are too easy. Like, you're undermining your own posts and stuff like that. And I'm like, I mean, first of all, I do appreciate feedback, so it's fine. But, what? like, <laughs> here's the thing. These are picked at random. <laughs> And then he came back. I told him that. He was like, he came back and he was like, oh, I didn't know you were being that lazy about it. And I'm like, um, hold on. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then I explained that, like, first of all, the reason there are, like, multiple, some are easy, some are not. Like, that's kind of the goal. Yeah. Some are easy for some people and not for others. I posted, like, Reoccurring Nightmare. And he was like, this is too easy. But then didn't put the name. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was just like, uh. Um, but oh then also, God, like, Reoccurring Nightmare is good and easy for a lot of people who play, like, Cube or have played for a while. But, like, sure. any standard player who is only a standard player has no clue what that card is. Uh, yeah. Like, or Fork. Or like Fork. OG That's art an alpha for card. Fork? Um, really, so, bro? Yes, it is a well-known card to some people, not everybody. So just a heads up. Not calling this person out, but I am kind of calling that person No, let's do it. <laughs> hey, friendo. <laughs> How are you today? How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Didn't realize you were that lazy about it. I mean, if you want to take over our Instagram, please do, because I don't want to do it. Um, that that warms the cockles of my heart. <laughs> cockles. Yeah. <laughs> They're in there. <laughs> Next to the scrotals. <laughs> Stop laughing at our own jokes. Uh, anyway, anything else you want to talk about before we go? Yeah, did you hear my great... One liner just then? No, I didn't. I was laughing at my own joke. All right, that's fine. What'd you say? Nothing. You'll get it when you edit it. <laughs> <laughs> God. All right. Uh, I think we're gonna get out of here. Uh, thanks for Woo. watching, guys. We're stoked to be back. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Uh, my name is Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been it resolves. Woo! I said it was next to the scrotals. <laughs>